Welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Jis Hadji. Hello, everyone. I'm Louisa Lee. And this is definitely not the studio. Yes, look at the surrounding. We're at a gastropub here in the heart of Beijing. I just love an episode like this because we get to drink, we get to eat, right? Yeah, pretty uh, lucky, huh? Here is the question for you. What is the most consumed beverage of the tea in China? Baijiu. Is that right there, sir? Why Baijiu? This is everyone a beer brewery. Drink, yeah, but everyone drinks Baijiu in China. But actually, it's beer. Wow. Might be surprising. Yeah, right? pretty surprising. Everyone drinks beer, it seems, in China, everywhere in the country. Now, here is the next question. Uh, how long is the beer drinking history in China? Hmm. 2,000 years. Why in thousands? Because I feel like everywhere you go in China, you can get beer, so it's quite accessible. Seriously? Yeah. So thousands. I thousands. Yeah. What do you think? But you're right. Yeah. Huh? In thousands, you're right. Uh, actually, it's much longer than that. It's actually nine thousand years. Well, nine thousand. I yeah. wouldn't have thought that. Boy, it came as a surprise to me. Too. Yeah. But we get to uh, drink some new beer here. Yeah. Well, obviously, like you said, yeah. People here in China love beer, but what about craft beer? This is the burning question. Uh, I have no idea because it's new to me. But we get to drink them. Have a little taste. All right. Here they are. Prepare for us. All okay. in different colors. Yes, different flavors. I'm assuming. Yeah, starting from the light ones to the, the darker darkest, ones. Yeah. And we're now joined here by Clifford. Hello, sir. Hello. Nice, nice to meet you. Thank you for having us. They're all in different colors. So how different are they? Well, they're all quite different, actually. Yes. Um, let me explain you. Um, we, we got a vice beer here. Okay. The right, uh, kind of German beer. Mm -hmm. All right. We have a gold nail, which is uh, with uh, New Zealand hops. It's, uh, our brewmaster is from New Zealand. We got an IPA, which mm -hmm. is the uh, brewery classic, yeah. kind of thicker, hoppy, nice beer. Yeah. And um, the porter, which is our gold medal award-winning beer. Right. Um, so yeah, that's four. So that that's four of them. That's all you have, or we have uh, always around 12 beers on tap, plus um, oh. four seasonal beers, which are on and off. Uh, currently, we have um, a coffee beer mm. can on tap, mm -hmm. made with coffee and beer. It's dark like a porter. It goes well with omelette in the morning. Absolutely. Right. The breakfast the beer. The better. All right. Oh, sounds <laughs> nice. Right. <laughs> um, Hmm. Pick one for the lady. Yeah, which okay. one do you recommend? I, I think you should try the okay. IPA. Oh, I am I am an IPA, IPA kind of girl. All so right. Got this one uh, right. For me, sir? Porter. Let's go for the porter. Yeah, yeah never tried it before. The heaviest one, yeah? yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll go for the vice grip. You okay. go for the light one. So All right, cheers. 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 Mm. cheers. Mm. It's actually... Bitter but nice. This is bitter. I like this bitter. <laughs> right. And for more about craft beer, let's go back to the studio. And thank you again, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And welcome back. Welcome back to the studio. Remember what we said. For more. For more, let's come back to yes, the studio. And the for more craft beer, also let's come beer back to the studio. Yeah, we're back right. here. Cheers, everyone. Uh, just look around here at the studio. Lots of beer. All different kinds of beer, and indeed, we're about uh, craft beer more here in the studio. And yes, we're joined by three gentlemen in the studio. Hello, hello, sir. Right, let's let's, let's go for it first. Cheers, Welcome yes, cheers, cheers. Welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome, cheers, Welcome. Cheers. Welcome. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, guys. This cheers. is like the most tasty episode <laughs> of crossover. So, so, what are we drinking? It's uh, um, Belgian wheat, uh, Belgian wheat, so mm. it's with. Uh, a current aceite and uh, some uh, orange peels. Okay, it's, it's light, Yeah, it's, it's quite tasty. refreshing, quite yeah. crisp. It's yeah. a very good beer for summer. Mm. It's almost like, you know, with beer, we can skip the part of introducing our three gentlemen here. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> but still, we're going to do it. I'm Pedro. I'm with ZX Ventures, a division of AB InBev in China. And you're here to foster the growth of craft beers. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ding Haopan. I founded Panda Brew in 2013. Uh, so, Mr. Pan yes. or Panda? Yes. <laughs> so, this is a local brewery. It's okay. a local brewery. Is it based in Beijing? Uh, our company is in Beijing, okay. but our brewery is in Hunan. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. So, my name is Song Sung Yaozu. I'm the chairman and founder of Shangri-La Highland Craft Brewery. So, and we are based in Shangri-La on the Tibetan Highlands on 3,300 meters over sea level. Mm. So, Shangri-La, not the hotel. No, it's we the have Shangri-La. Shangri-La. <laughs> we have nothing to do with the hotel. We are, 
we are delivering uh, some of our beers to some of the Shangri-La hotels, but uh -huh. we are based in Shangri-La. Okay. So it's in the province Yunnan yes. and in the Tibetan area. In, in, in southwest yeah. China, exactly. in Yunnan province. And exactly. when did you found this company? So we started brewing in 2008 okay. and we expanded our brewery in 2015. Okay. And right now we have a brewery with around 100,000 hectoliter. A okay, year. business, wow. it seems business is good, right? Yeah, craft just, beer, it, it's really gaining momentum here in yeah. China. Just look at them and everyone is still talking cool, right? Yeah. So we'll see after a few rounds, <laughs> after we finish all these months. <laughs> we'll see what's <laughs> going to happen for today's show. Today. today we're talking about craft beer. Yes. So what is craft beer? Yeah, I, I want to ask the gentleman here. What is, <laughs> what is that? Is great what way. Define, no, what defines craft beer? What makes craft beer craft beer? So what is craft beer? Yeah. We kind of came up with one theory that uh, if you have uh, three elements in your beer or your beer, you might call it yourself craft beer. One is a uh, variable, which is uh, lots of different kinds of uh, uh, beer and same time. Different flavors. Different flavors, mm. different uh, label, everything. Yeah. And the uh, second one is uh, localized. So local which means you came up with some local culture, mixed with the flavor, recipe, everything. Mm. And the third one is uh, the, we call it the craft beer spirit. You use a very natural, very organic, very good stuff into the beer. These ingredients. So yes. good ingredients, right, it has to be localized. Yes. And what's the other one? Uh, uh, variable, so different okay, kind of Different beer. kind of flavors. Different. Well, uh, the impression is that I'm getting is you're creating this notion of craft beer so that you can charge people high prices, right? <laughs> oh, like you had in beers, like, like you had in beers, miss, like uh, most, most beer today is lager, but beer can be much more than lager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you had in there, like a nice porter, an amazing wheat beer, a fantastic, like, blonde ale. So like Jin Hao said, like, uh, if people drink most lager, but we can bring them into new territories, that's mm -hmm. how a person is craft. But they yeah. tend to be quite pricey, right? They're, they're much more expensive to produce. Mm. As we are artisanal, we have smaller butts, they get much mm. more expensive mm. to produce. Mm. Yes. Let's come back to the definition of craft beer, mm. right? Some of them are maybe not so very precise, so, but it's really hard to say what is craft beer, and I try to define it for myself. You know? So I said, like, Tony, are you a craft brewer? Is your beer brewery a craft brewery, right? And when I look at myself, the first thing what I'm doing in the morning when I'm coming to my craft brewery or to my brewery, I'm going into the production and I'm walking from tank to tank and I have a relationship to each of, of these tanks, to each of our beers which are going out. And I thought like, yes, as long as I'm going first to the production room and taking care of my beer and then in a second part, maybe to the daily business, maybe about sales volumes, monthly sales volume, etc. As long as I'm doing this, this is for me crafting or craft brewing. It has mm. nothing to do with the size of something. And actually that, it's applicable to other craft stuff also. There's not only craft here. There is, uh, you can do craft in wine, you can do craft, craft in coffee. Yeah. And everything when you take care of your product in first line, then you're craft. Well, there's this American definition, right? According to the American Brewers Association, there is a definition for craft beer. Mm. Do you think it has to fall under that definition? Or, Sonny, do you think you can have your own definition of craft beer? Absolutely not. I think, honestly, this is something like they're trying to protect their craft association. Standards. Mm -hmm. Standards to, to the big brewers, whatever. Of course, uh, sales is important when you want to have a viable business, right? Exactly. Um, but in first line comes the product, then your customers that they're satisfied, and then maybe the daily business. And in this, in this uh, range, line up. Because uh, with a good product, you can make a good branding. And with a good branding, you can make good price and good sales and not the other way around. Is it a trade-off? And basically, you know, you're saying it should be local, it should be uh, tailored to maybe a, a, a group of people with different flavors, but you're also talking about business. It's almost like in your big beer group, it's beer group, but within that group, you have small sections of craft beer. So how do you see the dilemma, if it is a kind of a dilemma? I think it's an opportunity. Like, you can delight people with different flavors, as both Ni Hao and, and Sunny said. Like, uh, uh, you really get this connection with the tank, each different brew that you're preparing. There is no dilemma. 
Well, no, just need like to your point, you mentioned about the price. Like you see but what everything. we can, we, what it can sell to make the business viable. But it's not a dilemma; it's an opportunity. People like are craving for flavors, for different experiences. A beer that you can have just unwinding, sitting with a nice cigar, or a beer that you join an amazing steak. It's, it's all great, Petro. But what I'm saying is, if it is mass production, then you can cut the cost to minimum. Well, if you are going to develop, say, special, all these specialties to uh, only, relatively speaking, a small group of people, then... Lager got very large, and because it got large, you can have a larger production, and you can have more efficiency, it's not cutting cost. Okay. I think you're creating a new segment, which is super exciting, and eventually to get large enough, so that you can get like into a large production, cost might be lower, but I think the opportunity here is, again, doing great brews that mm. are delighting people all over. So it doesn't really contradict having a large production versus being a craft beer brand. Before craft beer, the world is very boring. You could only choose so many uh, yeah. different kinds of brands, yes. but all lager, mm -hmm. all very light, light lager. But right now we have so many different kind of flavors, yeah, so many different true. choices, yeah. and uh, you come like pair with your food, like all different kind of flavor food with different kind of beer. Just like the uh, the fact that you 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 get to invent all these different labels and they all look cool. And right? they all have really interesting names. Different names. Right? Oh. They're very catchy. Where did you come names. up with all these names? With the labels, we want to express and differentiate ourselves as craft brewers, right? So when you look at the labels, let's say, from the mass-produced uh, beers, they look quite boring. So with craft... You're saying quite, Qingdao is boring. They look quite boring. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say like that you will win a design prize with, with Qingdao label, but Definitely, yeah. With, with, the, with the label, we are expressing ourselves and we are trying to tell the story already of our beers, right? But you have so many different, different flavors. That means Absolutely. you have so many different stories to tell. Absolutely. Every, every, fl every flavor and every SKU, every beer which we are producing and the labels have a story, right? So right. when you talk about the Supernova, which is in the middle, the blue one, okay. this is uh, a label, one. yeah. The style of the label is all of the Tibetan tanka painting and that uh, wow. expresses our oh, brand DNA also. And this beer is very special. We are brewing that only one time a month at full mm. moon in the wow. night. Wow. wow. Because we believe that during that time that the whole nature, and we are living very close to the nature in mm -hmm. Tibet, that the whole nature is different. The power is different at full moon. The water oh, is different. The quality, everything. The grain is different. <laughs> so we are making this special beer only at full moon nights. I'm not going to ask the question how many different kinds of beer you're producing. I'm, I'm basically saying how many stories you have to create, produce each year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty is natural. It's literally like the brewmasters are the artists, like the chief artists is there, and, and, and they conceive what the next brew is going to be. So mm -hmm. they are going to decide the flavors and also yeah. maybe the stories. Yes which might yes. be their inspiration. And if you don't bring this, uh, as Ding Hao said, if you don't bring these various, if you don't bring these new seasonals, like, mm. people get bored. And that's actually mm. the excitement that you bring, like all the different creations that you might oh. do with this. Do you think crossover is going to be one of their stories, <laughs> maybe next? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe we'll have a crossover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. make a collaboration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll make a crossover beer or something. Yeah. yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> Talking about craft beer, it sounds like this is an imported uh, term, idea, right? Yeah. right? So, but if, is there a term of Chinese craft beer? Actually, this is a honey ale, and the honey actually ah. originally from China and only uh, produced in China. Mm. It's called uh, Bai Hua Mi, which means uh, Hanjiao flower honey. Oh. And the only can be brewed by the local Chinese bee. And, uh, a local th Chinese bee? Yeah, that's only like 30% uh, of a bee uh, farms like uh, still uh, harvesting um, honey by using local bee. And uh, the others are all from like Italian bee or something. So uh. we are trying to help their business and help the environment. That's why we use this uh, local honey. Uh, mm. Only exists in China to use uh, to brew uh, honey oil. See, there's also a story behind it, right? You oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you only saying this or actually can you uh, produce the same uh, quality, the same flavor with these from different regions? Actually, uh, we've been working with uh, like a uh, uh, bee farm uh, exists in Jiangxi province and they've been, they've been like uh, bee farmers for like uh, three generations and then they were helping the entire mountain mm. to keep the bee over there. So All right, so it's local. So it's the same like with the, um, the Shangri-La one, the story is that you have are the local stories. 
Yeah, it's not only the local story because we are a beer from Shangri-La, so we, are, we want to use a lot of local raw materials, right? I see. So in Shangri-La, on 3,300 meters, we have maybe the best water in whole China, maybe even in the world, I don't know. But definitely the water is something very important for us. And the yeah. second thing is, for the Tibetan people over there, one raw material is very important. This is the chinka, the highland barley. Mm. So chinka is, uh, is a part of our daily life. Mm. So when you, when you have a celebration, like a wedding, comes a chinka. When somebody dies, comes a chinka. And even uh, for food, every day we're eating chinka. So we actually turned the highland barley, the naked barley, we turned that into a product, uh, and we're using that in our beers. Mm. So it's very local. Right. So it's pretty much like, you know, this is a, uh, um, a universal notion of craft beer, but at the same time, if you use local ingredients, if you are targeting local drinkers, you, you, you're, you're inspired by local cultures, local, local stories, this is craft beer of your region, right? Is that the idea? Absolutely. Mm. Again, how do you bring it like something personal mm. to the people who are serving our beer? And I guess it's also trying to bring uniqueness to, to your brand as mm. well because you want to use local ingredients. Yes. Um, so this is also the same as, say, craft beer in the West. They also use local ingredients. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So time to cheer again. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> that, that was it. All right. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Let's take a Cheers. break and we'll continue our discussion after that. And for more information about Crossover, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We'll be right back. Mm. And welcome back to the studio, and we are joined by three beer experts here. Let's first talk about your first encounter with craft beer. Mm. When did you fall in love with craft beer, or do you think it's an acquired taste? How did this happen? Yeah. Well, in my case, I grew up in Brazil, and uh, Brazil is mostly lager beer. And I remember traveling with my parents to England for the first time having a brown ale. Back to the thing about like, craft being different than lager, and wow, what a lovely type of different beer. And from there on, never look back. So trying different kinds of beer, what is like a pale ale, what is a porter, what is a stout. So my first encounter was back in England on something that was different than that. How long was this? Well, that's quite ago? some time back. We're yeah. talking about 10 years ago. But to be a ago. drinker and to be actually in this business are two totally different things, right? Yes, How did you get sir. yourself into this business? Well, in my case, working in a larger corporation, just looking what is the fastest growing part of our business and its craft. So mm -hmm. then, like, uh, and what is one of the fastest growing countries for us is China. But you did mention the story with your father. Oh, yes, sir. So, what did he say? Well, I'll say that today he's very proud about that. But when I told him I was leaving quite a reputable job in Brazil to join a brewery, like he was not exactly happy. But in time, he got to appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing beer. Are you beat some beer? In time, right? he got to appreciate that. Does he drink your beer, too? He's more of a whiskey gentleman. But he, I, I developed I develop his, his love for beer. Okay. All right. Especially made for you. Oh, yes, for sure. That is beer. All right. What about you, Pat? Uh, actually, I went to Canada studying in 2005. Mm. I was studying engineering, designing cars or something. But uh, one of my best friends, he was uh, a brewmaster in a small craft brewery. Mm. So I remember the very, very first uh, uh, craft beer, actually, he brought to me this uh, uh, honey ale. And it was my first uh, like, uh, shock about the beer. I said, oh, something can be this tasty. Mm. And then start from there. I so is it more about honey or about more about beer? It's about the beer. <laughs> 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 and uh, I tried to learn as much as I could. And mm. uh, when I came back to China during summer break uh, in 2008, I couldn't find lots of uh, craft beer uh, brands in China. So I was thinking, why don't I just introduce it back to China? So when I came oh. back in 2010, I studied a little bit and uh, trying to learn some business uh, like, uh, uh, from through my family and then I started uh, the business in 2013. So. so from an engineer to now a, a craft beer owner. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're a wow. traitor. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you betrayed what you've learned. <laughs> actually, in our industry, like, lots of uh, craft brewers, 
actually uh, switch from engineer. Oh, I'm an engineer too, so we're in this together. You're in this together. You're in this together. I had a shock also, like, uh, but the other way around. So my shock was, uh, you know, when you're born and raised in Switzerland, you grew up with a, with, with a good beers, right? And then you're coming back to China and you drink the Chinese beer. Then I had a shock <laughs> because I didn't know that it's beer, right? It tastes totally different. <laughs> so I thought, like, okay, really out of this need that, oh man, you will know the Chinese people, the young people, they don't forget that moment when they drink the first time craft beer. Oh, it's yes. really like memorable. For me, it was the Chinese beer <laughs> in Gossipers when I drank that. So I thought, like, no, I have to change that. And we have to make better beer here. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah. I, no, we had just the, uh, right. a refill. Yeah, so well, what, what is this one? What this, is, uh, this is the yeah. light. It's the soya la. Okay. Uh -huh. Cheers. Cheers. It's yeah. from Shangri La. It's yeah. from Shangri La, brewed okay. with Highland Barley. It's an uh, entrance lager, which we have. What do you mean, entrance? Because this is a lighter beer. so... Entrance level. It's entrance level. Okay. It's, um, it's very light, but you can already feel the nuttiness mm. of the Highland Barley. Okay. Which gives a very distinct flavor. A bit sweet. Is yeah, a little okay. bit sweet. Even in though the end. it's light, it's still quite aromatic, right? Mm. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, this is, like I said, it's the entrance beer. This is our uh, uh, volume driver. Mm. A lot of uh, local people they like to drink this beer. Mm. And then after we gave them this beer, <laughs> then we try to educate them, lure them actually into the other craft beers so which we had, ones, yeah. stronger ones. Yeah. Up to 8.2 percent. Uh, Maybe we talk later about two. This one yeah, is like it's 3.1. This the fat stroma is 8.2 percent. It's a double wheat bulk, but we can talk about that later. So this is more <laughs> about al alcohol. How yeah. much percentage of alcohol in it? So what I'm saying is, because you know, personal stories are all interesting. You might have all different experiences wherever you are in in Europe, in America, anyway, maybe overseas, but. To have a business in China again is a different story. I mean, how did you come up with this idea? You, you said basically you wanted to, well, replicate the experience that you had overseas. You wanted to drink what you had overseas. You guys too? No, no, no. Our background story is completely different. I didn't come back to, to China to, to, to do business in first line. So my mom is, uh, she's running an orphanage already more than 30 years in, in, in China. First one, first orphanage in Lhasa, in Tibet, and the second one in, in shangri -La. And she asked me if I can help her with the orphanage project, because after a while the kids are getting older, they're coming out of school and they don't find jobs. Ah. So she asked me if I can provide jobs, because in my, in my past in Switzerland, I had already in, uh, trained interns in my own company. So right. she said, Maybe you can do something like that. So was it in, in beer or no? I have a real estate development background, okay. so I, I'm a real estate developer back in Switzerland, long time back. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, and uh, we are very proud that we can say we are like a corporate social responsibility company. Mm -hmm. So more than 80% of our staff are former kids from the orphanage, oh. and uh, we train them in our in house, and uh, we have different kind of jobs from brewmaster over lab sales, administration, oh, wow. everything. Um, and this is the fun part of my job, next to beer, right? We are like, we're running our business like a family, and that makes our brand strong. Yeah. Cheers for yeah. that. Thank Cheers you very much. It's very yeah. cool. Cheers. 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 And yourself, Pan? When I was studying in Canada, there was only one Chinese beer brand called Qingdao. Uh, Qingdao. And uh, when I travel around, uh, when I was... Uh, I, I love to cook. I love to cook, share Chinese food to my friends. But the local guys always told me that, okay, the only Chinese beer we don't like. It's not as good uh, as our like, uh, local craft brewery, any beer. So I, I could introduce them best food, but I couldn't introduce them the best beer. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, okay, why don't I just uh, home brew some? Mm -hmm. so I so you in, did in Canada. In Canada. So, so you started doing yourself in yes. the beginning. So I started with like a 20 liter size of a fermentation pack, which is uh, like a glass. You sure you started engineering, <laughs> not chemistry or other <laughs> subjects? So, so you self-learned <laughs> basically, right? Yes, yeah, self-learned. And then wow. I started to brew a little bit. Actually, my very first beer was a very complicated beer. It's a Belgian triple. And so I, I didn't succeed. <laughs> but uh, I tried so hard to learn from it. And then uh, later on, when I came back, I studied more and I couldn't brew a lot. I remember that 
very, very, very first week when I opened Panda Brew Bar, my uncle came over and uh, he tried the beer. He said, okay, if you are not like in, in the family, I won't drink your beer. Because <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. Yeah, because of flavor. You never know what you're going to drink. It's a common, actually, right? Well, that's the fun part of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the good thing is, uh, second year, he asked me to give him more. <laughs> All right. So, y roughly the years that you are talking about are like 2000 something, 2008, 2011, 2013. Is that when the industry started? Say, you know, when Chinese consumers so started to craft it's, beer? Yeah, it's only been less than like 10 years. You, you might think years. about the following. Since 1990, the fast of economic growth in China yeah. translated to the disposable income has been rocked. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, in the beginning, people barely could afford any industrialized product. Okay. And then, like if you wish, lager beer exploded, became the largest market in the world. Like in our case, what we notice, like uh, exactly in this time frame you're saying, between 2012, 13, 14, people were ready to go beyond lager. In our case, like, okay, so it's the moment to invest in craft beers in China. We started like we have an American brand, Goose Island, so how do we come with different offerings? We came with Goose Island that mm. is rocked in China with our IPA. But we, Goose Island has a stronger flavor. I yes. mean, how, because we talked about entry level beer for, for the Chinese consumers. And then mm -hmm. how, we wow, actually did three things. Yeah. So Goose Island that, like, uh, was an amazing, like, super established craft mm -hmm. brand. And again, for our portfolios, like uh, Sony mentioned, that uh, this one is uh, his, his, his main volume driver. IPA, even being a stronger beer, is our main volume driver. But we also invested in an amazing local Shanghai beer, Boxing mm. Cat, mm. a very successful venture for a group of entrepreneurs that started back in 2008. And to this point about the entry level, we just started to start with uh, uh, creating from zero a Chinese brand. We call it Kaiba. When uh, did you introduce that Chinese brand? Last year. Last just year. last year. Oh, May 19, Ijo. So, uh, so it's, it's doing well now. Well, it's starting, but this is like a one. When, when as IPA is a very strong flavor, mm. we started with flavors that are a graduation from lager. So actually our entry level is a lager that is a passion fruit lager. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a similar, it, it's just like mm. this amazing brew, but in our case, like it's a, it's a fruity, more a sweeter palate, mm. so that you start to see that you can evolve in flavor. It's funny, when, we, when I started brewing beer in Shangri-La, I had no idea about craft beer. Mm. I never heard the term craft beer, I just wanted to make good beer. Every region, every city, every They're village has their own brewery and is making their own beer and it tastes different and it tastes just better, right? So yeah. I was brewing beer in, in, in 2000 and I thought, honestly, I thought like I'm the only guy in, in, in China who is doing something like that. And then one guy, one time a guy came to me, uh, was a tourist and he said like, this is craft beer. And there's another guy in Shanghai, he's doing the same thing. Yeah. And that was the first time that I heard. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. And he's right. American, Harbin, Harbin has been doing different brews since 1900. Yeah. Yeah. Jujian has been doing amazing with fresh beer for a long time. So it's not something You've been drinking, man. I was drinking. I never heard about the, the expression of coffee. But okay. that guy told me that yeah. there was a guy from Shanghai. And he said, like, there's another guy in Shanghai who's doing the same thing. And that was uh, Michael Jordan yes, from uh, Boxing Cat. And then later I heard about Carl from Great uh, Sunny, Leap, and et cetera, et cetera. Do you feel there are any developments, evolvements, different changes, different phases, say, in, in the development? Oh, yes, definitely. Actually, uh, when we started Panda Brew, uh, the consumers mostly likely, like uh, they are uh, in 35 to 40 years range. And, but right now, they are... 90% of them are 20 years old to 25. It's much so it's younger, younger generation. Right? The consumer group and uh, oh, right. initially, I was thinking maybe a craft beer is only for uh, male consumers, like uh, some guys uh, who know a little bit thing about the beer. They want to drink a lot. But actually, we have 15 bars right now, mm. and uh, more than 60% of our consumers are girls. I feel like I can say this from first hand experience. When You're I first one of the girls. Oh, kind of. But when I first came to uh, Beijing like a year ago, I would go to craft beer breweries and it wasn't really packed. But now it's different. When I go in there, it's fully packed. Right. So, and I feel like queuing is becoming a norm. I almost feel like just within this year, it has actually grown a lot. It has 
you know, this, the sales has been soaring rapidly. So it's almost yeah. like starting from 2008-ish, and people like yourself, though probably you didn't know what you were doing, but people like yourself were educating the market. Yes. And in a few years' time only, it seems, you know, many of my friends, we are talking about, you know, going to a brewery mm -hmm. uh, in Beijing, you know, because they have different flavors, and people are not accepting the idea of, uh, of, of different flavors, but mm -hmm. at the same time paying more. So we just talked about uh, the craft beer market, that the market is actually growing, right? Yeah. But on the other side, I want to talk a little bit about the Chinese craft brewers also, right? Mm. Because when I see, when I started, or when we started in 2008, 2009, there were not really a lot of Chinese craft brewers around, right? No. More or less, there were like expats mm -hmm. who were like... Had, brewers, had, not drinkers. Brewers, brewers who had a brewers. home brewing experience or background mm. and they started brewing, right? But in the meanwhile, I'm honestly, I'm very, very proud to see that we have so many very good Chinese brewmasters which are producing amazing beers. And <laughs> this uh, is something else which we have to maybe highlight, you know. Mm. It's not only that the, the consumer base is, uh, is, is, is growing, we have even the, the know-how in the craft beer market in China is growing enormously. Where do they get trained? Oh, I mean, some of them, they have... Some of them, they have like homebrew uh, background, but some of them, they are really like graduated from Wuhan uh, Brewing University or Shandong Brewing University. There is and, mm. and a brewing university? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. listen, you have very good ones. immense brewing university in Wuhan. Yeah. They like the industry in brewing sciences. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. And the cool thing is, when you think, when you think about uh, a craft brewer or craft brew master, you have always this picture in mind, a foreign guy with a beard, a beard yeah. tattoo, and a be a belly, you right? Have tattoo? Yeah. I have tattoo, but you're Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is when you look at the Chinese brewmasters, they're actually con op totally the opposite. They are like shootites. Yeah, they're like the super beer nerds, mm -hmm. and you need to be a beer nerd uh, uh, because cr making craft beer has a lot to do with with science. Ah. with mathematics, ah. with microbiology, etc. You have to learn that stuff if you want to make a good beer. Not engineering. I need to add engineering. <laughs> and engineering. <laughs> yes. and engineering. Yeah. I need to mention, uh, we, we set up, uh, we just uh, inaugurated a craft brew house in Wuhan. Yeah. And actually we have a combination, like Michael Jordan now is working there with us. We have an amazing brewer, Michael Josh. Jordan. That Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. He, he comes before that Michael <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> okay, Michael Jordan. But uh, MJ is there. And then we have this amazing Australian fellow, Josh, that was a professional quick tier before and fell in love with beer. Wow. But then we have the Chinese generation graduated from Wuhan. So an amazing combination mm. between, mm. if you wish, like the old style, like the bigger guys with more the art, but then the science, the engineering. And they are brewing like uh, amazing concoctions. Let's have fun now. Yeah, yeah. Have Drink it out. Another toast. Okay, we're going there to have goes. a refill of a different kind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, let's take a break. We'll be right back. We'll be back with more discussions about craft beer. Mm. Welcome back to the studio. So, what are we drinking now? We, we have uh, a refill. And oh, yes. This is our uh, third best selling beer. Hmm. Which is called. Uh, You're not serving us the best. Only the <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we keep the best later. Okay. Yeah. And this is called uh, Sixth Date Ginger Golden Ale. I could taste the ginger in here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, we created the recipe in winter because uh, people, especially in Hunan, people tend to drink a lot of uh, ginger, some kind of a soup or something mm. like that. Mm. So we add ginger into our golden ale oh, and create this, this one. What about the drinkers? Who are, who are the consumers who, who yeah. drink craft beer, basically? Yeah, who are the people China? that have a zest for craft beer in China? Well, on the, one, what you mentioned, like on this movement in the cities, it started probably with expats. But more and more, like, uh, Chinese really open for new flavors. And what you see, bars like uh, IEP Joe in Shanghai, really with young people, young students, Chinese students. Mm. And literally, like, people that like uh, stronger offerings, a stronger flavor, are going into craft beers. Uh -huh. Just like they would go into red wine or into a whiskey, like they see now beers that they can enjoy with a much stronger body, uh, a different thing than lager. So that's in big cities, in, in Shanghai and in Wuhan. What about in Shangri-La? So these are the young Chinese people that 
educated, maybe studied abroad, uh, want to be sophisticated, want to be different, right? They like to have different kind of hobbies. They like to go travel. Okay. And they are interested in consumer upgrades. Mm. Okay. And they can afford an Apple iPhone. So an Apple iPhone is not different. I mean, uh, there are other, other, iPhones, uh, other phones which you can do the same thing with an iPhone. But he wants to have an iPhone because he wants to show that he's sophisticated. You're different. different. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are calling our target cost consumers or target customers the Apple. So mm -hmm. uh, at the entrance, you would say, hey, what kind of phone do you use? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get in. Not Apple. Apple. Uh, <laughs> is the consumer group the same as in the West? Because we I read in an article that it says like 40, 40 some percent of people who drink craft beer are what, bachelor graduates? Right? Degree or, holders. Yeah, uh, bachelor degrees. It's not education. They, they like to buy that organic that food. Salt because yeah. all of us, do you do the same thing all the time? Mm. It's all about the occasion. I think mm. something brilliant, I think how they like, when you do restaurants, people come like Chinese life, love food. Mm. And it's a perfect opportunity for you to say, listen, you're having this great meal, a hot pot or a steak. Mm. And would you pair this with this amazing stout or with this blonde ale? Mm. And then you actually, like, people will try, like, people are having their food with an amazing drink. And this is one manner, like, don't think about what is the profile, but think mm -hmm. about what is the occasion in which you're fostering the beer. Mm. Mm -hmm. What would be the locations most likely where you see more craft beer drinkers? Well, restaurants, actually, like, in our case, we have the Goose Island Brew House in Shanghai, like, it's booming. It's mm -hmm. where people really get in there, they're looking for their steak, they're looking for their squid, but they are very open to taste different beers. You create a location for that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, creating a restaurant, there is a beer restaurant, it's the best way to invite people into and, that. Yes. Isn't it just a hip thing to do? Do you think people like craft beer because they think it's hip, it's, it's different, it's unique? It's just a great experience. It's not about necessarily being hip, but like, how can I have a great moment with my friends, with my family, and mm -hmm. again, like, enjoy myself with a great dish, with a great beer. But do you think they really like craft beer, or do you think they're just saying that they like oh, craft beer? Because people craft beer love has flavor. A That's for me, like, is a belief. People love right. flavor. And as Dean House said, the variance is super important. So he said, like, this connection, like, this, this, this art that goes from the brewmaster, the connection with the tank, doing something different, something special, like, um, caring about what is this local ingredient that will connect with my people. That, that is where the magic comes. Uh, I'm just wondering if you've done any social studies, or what is your observation like? Because, um, like you said, it's... It's almost like an Apple generation because, you know, the reason they buy Apple is just like the reason they would like to come to pay more for craft beer because, you know, there is some psychological thinking behind that. So have you tried to explain why they would like to pay uh, a few times more, more actually? Because yeah. regular beer, beer is like three Is it more 20. about social status? Is it more about being in a, in a category? I mean, definitely, yeah, social status, category, everything has to, uh, plays a role inside. But in the end of the day, you have to see that we think and we believe and, and we are convinced that craft beer is a better choice than the mass produced. When you look at the quality, right, and that's why craft beer is even more expensive, mm. right, because if you have a good uh, product or a better product, then definitely you pay more for, for that also. Why are you smiling when you say prices? <laughs> <laughs> Do you I, don't I, believe I, in I, that. I, I, it's the beer. <laughs> Wait, Wait and here is one more thing. Because uh, China, maybe 10, 20 years ago, when China was transforming actually from the old economy to the new economy, when the economy develops, very often happens that expatriates, foreign expatriates, all people with overseas experience when they come back, will be the ones setting the train for mass consumption. Is that also the case with craft beer in China? Uh, let's, let's go back again. I mean, let's, when I have to make an example, okay? Instant noodle and a noodle shop around your corner who is making everyday fresh noodles, the price is different, right? So you can compare let's say the mass-produced beers with the instant noodle and the fresh craft beer with the fresh-made noodle shop around your corner. Mm, that's that's why you pay more. Mm. That's interesting. Because right. mm. you got people making the noodles and handmade. You, you, know, you know the noodle maker, you mm. know the, the boss, you know the, the wife, you know even the kids. And you know and you trust the noodle shop owner because he's doing his best to make the best and the most fresh noodle and the best and most fresh ingredients to provide to you. And yes, you pay more for that because of this experience. 
Mm. Yeah. Another thing is, I think, uh, uh, sharing the social uh, media. Let's say craft beer being popular in the last 10 years, but also it's the same period that uh, social media, Weibo, WeChat, every, all kind of Facebook, everything becoming popular in people's life. And then you don't want to show something like, okay, I'm drinking Tina beer again today for 100 days, something like that. You want to try something different and showing in the WeChat some account. So, so the social media also plays a huge role in, in boosting huge. this mm. uh, craft beer scene here. And educating the market yeah. too. Yes. Mm. Mm. How do you see the future of uh, craft beer in China? Well, what I see is again the Chinese beer market evolving and people interested in different beers. Mm. So if we do our jobs and really see the way to delight people with new experiences, new offerings, new flavors, variant beers, I think mm. it only grow. Like people like, like people in China, the economy continues to grow, people have more money, they want to be like in great restaurants, they want to have great drinks. There is like, if we don't do this job, someone will. But that so also means I'm, you have to be constantly changing and, yes. and, and changing up the flavors yes. and doing all these new, new tastes. Yes. It's also a, a lot of work that's behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Is it going to take over the share of, uh, you know, the massively produced beers? Say? Well, the consumer will tell us. <laughs> like what I'll disagree with Sunny, like I love football, watching football in a great stadium that is nothing better than a Budweiser. Like uh, that for me, like even before I joined this company, nothing better than a crisp lager, like really like uh, done a great quality. But then like when I'm sitting for a great steak, I'll go for an IPA. I love like reading like uh, in, in, in my home, like an amazing like stout age, like just like with a great book. So it's different moments. This is what mm. I tell you, I don't think it's the consumer profile, but what are the occasions that you enjoy? Mm. And that to determine what are great things for that moment. You're betting from both ends, so you're mm. safe. <laughs> 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 so Sonny, how do you see the future? You can see uh, the numbers. Craft beer is growing and it's a good thing. I'm just worried that we can keep up the quality, right? Mm. That, uh, that, uh, that craft beer has to have quality and, and this is the ma main concern that all the new craft brewers who are coming into this market that they see what kind of passion we have for, for this product, right? Mm. And uh, that, they, that we can drive mm. this uh, wave together and really focus on our quality because if we don't have that, then craft beer will die in China. You're also expanding now into, say, back in Switzerland and in, in other parts of Europe. Yeah, we had, uh, we had the chance to sign a, a cooperation contract with Carlsberg mm. uh, for Europe. So the Carlsberg is starting selling our beers in, uh, in, in Europe. Okay. And we shipped just oh. the first container over. Mm. Uh, let's see how that works. Yeah. So business oh, always yeah. starts with the first container. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a huge growth of potential in the craft beer scene, I guess, here in China. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the cool thing that, uh, that even, that even uh, brewers from Europe, or from America, they are interested in, in, in Chinese craft beer, right? Mm. So mm -hmm. now it goes the other way around. It's both and ways And that's now. why we are very proud that we can show that even in China that we can make a high quality product. Mm. Right? Mm. That I do believe in, but at the same time, if you're expanding your business into new markets in Switzerland or other parts of Europe, and are you still able to keep your personal involvement in that process? To that make it a craft? That is that's absolutely necessary. Mm. And that's mm. the fun part of my job. All right. Mm. It's, not, it's not the fun part to sit in office. Yeah. The fun part is in, in, to be in the brewery, yeah. and the other fun part is uh, maybe it sounds for you a little bit like, wow, you have to develop every day a new, uh, every month, every year a new product. This is the fun part. Oh ah, yeah. Mm. You're creating new stuff. Another fun part would be you guys exchange your products. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm mean, drinking. Yeah. I'm drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. Um, cheers. There is. There is actually another big part we wouldn't have time to cover for this epi episode, but mm -hmm. that's very important and fun too. Yes, we're gonna we, we're gonna have some food in the studio <laughs> later on in the next show. Wow. So uh, yeah, we're going to talk too. about what to go with craft beer. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun, you know. So different countries, different regions might have different yeah. habits. So we're going to save that part to the next episode of beer drinking crossover. Yeah, we'll see you again next time. See you next time.